Hello. Hey, good evening, everybody. My name is Josh Nelson. I'm a member at 12th Street Baptist Church in Rainbow City, Alabama. I want to thank you for joining us tonight as we continue through the book of Philippians. Um, if you want to go ahead and turn your Bible or your device, whatever, however you're viewing the Word tonight with us to chapter 4, verse 2 through 7, um, that's where we'll be tonight. It's going to be our main verses there. So if you want to go ahead and start turning to that, um, let me tell you a little bit about something that happened to me this week, and the Lord really moved in my life in a powerful way um, that I think could goes back to what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, I got a text from a friend of mine um, who we've we've worked together in the past, um, and you know we've grown to be pretty good friends over the past few years. And he was telling me about a promotion that he received, and and I was I was happy for my friend initially. I was very happy for him. I was excited for him. You know, he's worked really hard for this promotion, and then and then all of a sudden, as I got to thinking about it, <clears throat> a little bit of jealousy and. I, I guess despair started creeping into my heart, you know, and I was I was getting jealous of my friend's promotion, something that that he has worked so hard for, and something that that I had no claim to, um, you know, and it wasn't a job that I was even up for or anything like that. But it was, I was I was jealous of the circumstance that he was in that I wasn't in, and man, I went from sixty to zero in just a matter of minutes, and I was truly happy for my friend, but. I wasn't, I didn't experience the joy that God gives us through Jesus in my life at that moment. And I let my joy be determined by the situation that I was in, or in this situation, in this case, the situation that I wasn't in by not getting a promotion. And, you know, that, that was really when I was working through uh, the sermon for tonight and what we're going to be talking about and everything that really struck me and, and how I, I put, you know, let my joy be determined by the situation or the circumstance that I was in and in, in, in the moment and it's, it's really um, ashamed of myself for, for doing that and I, I did have to call my friend and uh, apologize to him because I didn't let him know you know up front that I was I was um, jealous or um, you know a little you know uh, envious of, of his job that he had gotten but um, I was. I had to call him and, and repent and get on my knees and ask the Lord to forgive me for that you know, because he has blessed me beyond all measures. And I need he, he really kind of kicked me in the rear end and taught me you know, that my joy is found in Christ. My joy is not found in circumstances. And as we read through the scripture, that's going to be our thesis statement. Our main point for tonight is 
find your joy in Christ, not in circumstances. So we'll go ahead and read, and we're again in Philippians chapter 4, verses 2 through 7, uh, verse 2. And this is Paul writing to the church of Philippi, as we've been continuing through here. He says, I entreat you, entreat you, Euodia, um, and I entreat you, Syntyche, to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Verse 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we come to you and we thank you this evening, Lord. We thank you, God, for giving us this time to, to open your word, Lord, and to, to read what you have for us today, Lord, and the, the word, that, Lord, that you inspired and that is, is so true in our lives today, Lord. It wasn't just true back then, Father, but it's true today. And I just want to thank you, God, for, for uh, giving us that, that guide to, to uh, our life, Lord, and revealing yourself in so many ways through us, through your word, Father. And pray, God, that for, for those that are sick, Lord, that you would be with them, Lord, that you would heal them, Lord, and whatever the, the situation is, Lord, that you would get the glory in those situations, Father, and that, and that we wouldn't look to man for our happiness, Lord, or for our joy and worldly things, God, but that we would look to you and, you know, what you're doing in our lives, for, Father, and what, what Christ did for us on the cross for our joy and happiness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So have you ever had a situation like that happen, kind of like what I described and, and what happened to me this week where, you know, we have, we place our joy in these earthly situations. Maybe it's, you know, we place our joy in a promotion that we get or um, a baby being born or, um, you know, a child getting married or these different things in life. Or maybe it's a season in life where, man, things are just really going good. You know, I'm, I'm living the high life right now and all of our joy comes from you know, these things that are going on around us and happening to us and we're being involved in. Or maybe, you know, it's the, the inverse of that where we lack joy because of certain circumstances that are happening to us or not happening for us. You know, I know that we've all done those things and like with me, you know, I let my joy be dependent on, you know, a circumstance, you know, not getting a promotion. It wasn't even a job that I applied for. It was just, it was one that, you know, I got jealous of my friends and my joy disseminated from there it just went away and you know I was really sour about it for a while I couldn't even be happy for my friend at one point for it have you ever had something like that happen to you have you ever had that happen where you take your eyes off of Christ and the joy that he brings us from the cross from his death and resurrection and you put your joy you relate it to circumstances and that's that's not a great place to be church let me just go ahead and throw that out there that's not a great place to be in a a great way to see. So let's look in in the uh, scripture here. We'll we'll start back out with the Philippians chapter four verses two through seven, and we'll look through there. So we'll just read it again, um, and we'll start with verse two. I entreat you, Odia, and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. So let's stop there at verse 4 and uh, then the verse 3. And we'll just talk about this for a minute. So Paul is writing to two members of the church in Philippi, and apparently there's some sort of issue that's come up, some sort of conflict that has come up with these two church members. Um, and it's big enough that Paul has to address it in the letter to the whole church. And I don't know about you guys, but if I was sitting in the church, and I was at Yodia or Syntyche, and... Paul named me in a letter, man, if that, if we hadn't figured out and uh, reconciled the conflict that we had at that point, I would be going to the other person pretty quickly to go ahead and reconcile that. And you see in verse 3 here, Paul also asks a true companion, he's not named, um, but he's asked for that person's help too, because you know these women, Iodia and Syntyche, they have labored side by side with Paul in the gospel together. And so these are Christian women. They call us calling for reconciliation among these people, among the conflict here. Um, and our main our main verse here is going to be verse 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. So we'll stop there and talk about these 
these two verses here. So a couple things to point out about this is, you know, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. So this is the, in this part of the uh, scripture here, these five verses, two through seven, rejoice is the only thing that Paul commands to do twice. And that's pretty big. That's pretty important, I think, here. Um, you know, and you can't see it in the English, but he's talking when he's saying rejoice. In the Greek, you can see the, the plural that he's talking not just, you know, to one person, to the um, the true companion. He's not talking just to that person, but he's talking to all three, to Iodia, Syntyche, and the true companion, to rejoice, to be joyful. Um, so that's the first rejoice is, you know, there's a plural there that we don't really see in the English. He's talking to them as a group. So he's telling the whole group to rejoice. Um, it is interesting here that he says, again, I will say rejoice. So he's saying, not only am I going to say rejoice today and be joyful today, I'm going to say it for now and always. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. So not only today, but always. And then he says it again. He says, again, I will say. So he puts the future tense. I'm going to continue to say rejoice. And it says, let your reasonableness, and some translations say gentleness. That's really, the, in my opinion, the best way to look at it. It's, it's cleaner, it's easier to understand um, in our English. Be known to everyone. So rejoice. Be gentle. Um, the Lord is at hand. So with this, he's talking the Lord is near. The Lord is at hand. And the Lord is near to us with the Holy Spirit and with his word. But then the Lord's second coming is near. We don't know the date or time. We should act like it is near. We should treat others as if it is near. We shouldn't, you know, act like we've got a lot of time left on the clock before our parents get home to get our chores done. That's not how we should treat uh, the second coming. We should treat it as it is near. Um, do not be anxious about anything. Verse 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So Paul is telling them here, do not be anxious um, about anything. Not Don't be anxious about these few things. Don't be anxious about the bad things that may happen or the good things that are you know we're concerned about. But don't be anxious about anything, church. Uh, what a relief. And he says here, the, the second part of chapter excuse me, verse 6, he says, but in everything by prayer and supplication, by prayer and humble thanksgiving, let your request be known to the to God, to the Lord Almighty Church. Let your humbly request be known to the Lord. Um, and that's pretty powerful, and that's how we're not anxious about this. That's how we're not anxious, is through prayer and, suppl and supplication, which is humbly thanking the Lord and requesting um, these things to God. Um, in verse 7, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And that, that is so comforting to me, church, that the, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, all mental capabilities, all that man can think and man can reason to, you know, that is, is, is a finite ability to, to think to something there. And, and, God passes that. He goes past our, our finite ability to reason and to think, and he surpasses it. Not only does he pass it, but he surpasses it and goes much further than what we can do. And that's the peace of God that we feel. And that's what, what Paul is talking about. Um, so all of that, church, to say, you know, we're really going to focus in on uh, verse 4 because it goes back to the double rejoice. And we're going to talk about our joy um, and we're going to, you know, focus in on that main point of find joy in Christ, not circumstances. Um, let me just kind of pause here and say, you know, that I certainly do not want to take take away from the severity of the situation that we're in right now with COVID-19 or anything. Um, I know there's a lot of people who are very sick, and I don't want to diminish that fact, and I'm not, um, you know, trying to you know, say that, that, that we shouldn't acknowledge what's going on around us, but I'm just trying to point everybody, and myself included, let's focus on Christ, let's be Christ-centered, let's focus in on Him, and not what's going on around us in the world. Um, that's, that's really the point of it all today. So, uh, find your joy in Christ, not circumstances. So, let's talk about this joy that Paul is writing about here. Um, and I guess I'll just kind of say the first thing, you know, just remind everyone, Paul is writing this from prison. So let that sink in. Paul is writing this from prison. 
Oh, it kind of takes my breath away. What a joyless place to um, be writing, you know, a letter of joy, an epistle of joy, as this is referred to, um, to say, you know, rejoice. And he's not just telling the church, but he's saying, I will rejoice always. You know, and he says, I will rejoice in the future. That's Paul saying that there too. And that's, that is a, a great command for us today, church, of you know, no matter what's going on around us, no matter what situation we find ourselves in or what situation we don't find ourselves in, the joy that comes from Christ and from Christ alone far surpasses any joy that this world can bring to us, any joy that that uh, a good situation can bring in, in the uh, the loss of joy that any bad situation can take away and can, can withhold from us, that, that joy that Christ gives us surpasses all of it just like the peace of god that that joy and that happiness that comes from christ it is it is far compared to anything that the world can give us um, john piper puts it this way joy is what faith does when it looks to god and trusts his promises in the face of conflict and imprisonment so let's say that again church joy is what faith does when it looks to god and trusts his promises in the face of conflict and imprisonment. To me, that sounds like joy comes from deep within our heart, from the root of our faith, when our faith looks to God, you know, and at the lowest of lows, when, like Paul is now, when he's in prison. And the church knows that. The church of Philippi knows that Paul is in prison. And that is what our faith does. It is happy, it is joyful, not because of a circumstance or a situation, but because of Christ and what Christ did for us and what he does for us every day, church. So um, the joy that Paul writes about is nothing like the joy the world can elicit or can supply for us. And we've already touched on that. This is this far surpasses anything that the world can, can, um, can give us. Um, another thing about this joy that Paul is writing about is that the joy it produces gentleness. You'll see that back in uh, verse, uh, let's see, it's verse five there. It says, let your reasonableness or gentleness be known to everyone. And that type of joy that, that comes from Christ, it produces a gentleness that the world sees. And when the world sees that gentleness and that joy, um, just think about that, what, what the world will see when, when we find our joy in Christ, in the salvation that he gives us, regardless of what's happening, good or bad or indifferent, if we are joyful in Christ, just think about what the world will see with us. So let's move on and let's talk about why do we rejoice? Um, and we rejoice uh, because of Christ. The joy first is Jesus. I'll say that again. The joy first is Jesus. Without Jesus, there would be no joy. Um, and this joy that Christ gives us, there are no loopholes. There are no uh, what ifs. There's no, um, it's going to run out at some point. Um, it's going to depreciate. It's going to only last for so long. You know, once we accept Christ in our hearts and we become followers and believers of Christ, that joy is there, church. And what a comfort that that joy is not the joy that we get from a good meal or a, a good situation happening or the loss of that joy doesn't come from you know something that happens around us from a, a pandemic or um, from losing a job or from you know your car breaking down and now you got to spend a thousand dollars to get it fixed you know that loss of joy that's not what we feel when we have the joy of Christ in us and when we we rely on his joy and not the joy of circumstances around us so in Luke uh, chapter 10 verses 17 through 20 this is Jesus talking about <clears throat> about joy and rejoicing here in seven chapter excuse me verse 17 he says and the 72 returned with joy saying Lord even the demons are subject to us in your name and he said to them this is Jesus talking I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven behold I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this. I want to repeat that. This is verse 20, Jesus speaking. Do not, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So church, that's Jesus talking you know, back in, in uh, Luke. 
in chapter 10, verse 20 there, and he says, Don't rejoice because I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy and that nothing shall hurt you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And that's why we rejoice, church. That's why we can find our joy in Christ and not our circumstances, not for you know, what is happening around us or what is not happening to us. I know we've talked about this. I've said it multiple times, but church, it is about uh, what Jesus did for us and what he does for us every day. And when we find our joy in Christ and not our circumstances, wow, what the world will see, what the world will see in there in us. Um, so through Christ's death on the cross, he gave us this joy. He set the standard for what joy is, and that is our, our names are written in the book of life. And that's also, you can see that in Philippians chapter 4, verse 2. Without Jesus, there is no joy. No joy. None at all without Christ. So find your joy in Christ, not your circumstances. So let me encourage you um, to think about what brings joy to your life. What brings you uh, the most happiness, the sustained happiness. Is it joy because of your circumstances or is it joy, joy because because of Christ and what he did and that your name is written in the book of life? And maybe this is the first time that you've ever heard anything like this. Um, and I just want you to, you know, think about it and, and act on it. You know, if, if God is calling you, seek him. You know, if you need someone to talk to, call our church. Message us on Facebook, message me on Facebook, you know, any of our pastors will be happy to talk with you, but, you know, don't stand on the sidelines. If you've never experienced the joy that, that is not fleeting, that is not um, changed by the circumstances around you, then I encourage you to, to seek the Lord in that and, you know, seek to give Him your life that you can follow Christ. Um, and maybe, maybe you've heard of this joy before, and maybe you know You've known this joy, but over time you find yourself um, seeking joy in the things that are temporal and in the world. Um, and let me encourage you to to repent, to repent for finding your joy in things that aren't of Christ. Um, the world has things that, that bring us much happiness, and that is those are gifts from God. But the true joy that's from deep within our hearts that creates gentleness and creates that love that we can show others that the world can see in us, it comes from, from what Christ did for us, from his sacrifice. So I encourage you to repent and to seek first the kingdom of God. And, <clears throat> and so let me encourage you, the next time you're frustrated about a situation, you're putting all your joy in, in a certain circumstance or a certain outcome of that circumstance, think about Christ, what Christ did for you on the cross. Think about the death that we deserve. So it's, it's easy to say that our joy should come from Christ and that you know, we should look for um, our joy from Christ and in Christ and what he did for us. But really we have to also examine what Christ saved us from on the cross. And the death that he suffered for us and the punishment that he suffered for us and by his resurrection, he paid the price that we owed for our sins, church. And... If, 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 if God can do that through Jesus, if he can pay our price, because Romans 6.23 tells us, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus our Lord. If Jesus can do that for us, then that's where I want to seek my joy, church. That's what I want to put all of my chips in and say, I will seek the Lord to find my joy, not the things that are going around, uh, going on around me in this world, not the situations that are happening, but the joy of the Lord and not our circumstances that that um, we find ourselves in or we don't find ourselves in church. Um, so let's take a moment and let's just think about what what would the world see if if the church, and I say the church meaning local church um, and then the global church, you know, what would the world see of us and what would they, they think and feel, not just see, but what would they think and what feelings would they have if we were always joyful and not just running around smiling just because, you know, we're too blessed to be depressed or some of the other monikers that get thrown around, you know, or um, other things that get said and they're just, you know, just sayings at this point. What if what if our joy truly came, church, from, 
from Christ and what he did for us and what he does for us every day, what would the world see? What would they think? What would they, how would they feel towards Christ's church? And how would that change their view of the church? I wouldn't, wouldn't, I would hope that they would say, you know, that, that, man, I want to be a part of that. That's what I want in my life. That's what I'm missing. You know, how are things crumbling around these people? And they're always happy, no matter if they're on the highest of highs or the lowest of lows, they're always happy. And that's, that's what I would hope they would say. But church, uh, just be real with you. I think that there would be some persecution and mockery that would be thrown at the church. You know, they would probably would say that it was a fake. It was, you know, we were just always um, keeping up good spirits just for presentation. But church, if my joy is truly found in Christ and what he did for us, then let them mock me and thank them for the persecution that I can be, that they're persecuting me for being more Christ-like, church. And that's, that is my hope and my prayer is that, you know, when we seek the Lord and we seek the joy that is found in Christ and not our circumstances, that, that we would be, that we would be able to, to not, to, to not only, you know, be joyful in the good times and the times of plenty, but we would be joyful in the times of despair and when things feel hopeless because that hope we know comes from Christ and that joy comes from Christ. Because if our joy is found in Christ, not our circumstances, then our joy will never be gone. It will never be taken away from us. So I'll say it one last time, church. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let us pray. Father, we come to you again and we thank you, Lord, for, for this time tonight, Lord. And we thank you, God, for the joy that comes from Christ and for what what he did for us on the cross, Lord, and that we know, Lord, that, that we can never repay that debt, Lord. And when Jesus went to the cross for us, that he, he covered our sins, Lord, and we thank you for that, that gift, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that, that our joy doesn't have to be manufactured by things of this world, Lord, that, that, will, that will fail us, that will rust, that will turn to dust, that moths will eat, Lord. But our joy is found in heaven and what Christ did for us, Father, and and that is glorious, and we praise you, and we thank you for that, Father. Pray, Lord, that you would, that you would just transform our hearts, Lord. That you would help us to always look to Christ, Lord, and that we would always see what He did for us on the cross, Lord, and never forget it, and and Lord, and to to understand it to the best of our abilities, Father. And pray for those, Lord, that that maybe this is the first time they're hearing this tonight, Lord. That you would just pierce their heart, Lord, and that you would. You would work in their lives in a powerful way, Father, and, and just continue to transform us to be more like Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.